Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another video for Kubernetes for Testers course. And in this video, we are going to talk about Selenium Grid Setup getting started. So in our earlier video, we discussed about the Kubernetes architecture that we are going to be achieving in this particular section, which is going to look something like this. As you can see, there will be a lot of parts and each and every parts are going to communicate with another part, which is going to be Selenium Hub. So it's going to be basically a Selenium grid setup that we are going to be making. And these parts or the nodes are going to communicate with Selenium server using what is called as the services. So basically this is what we're going to be doing. So we are going to use basically something like a replication controllers, parts, and we also discuss how we can do that with deployments and stuff. Everything is going to be coming in in this section and we'll see how it actually works. So basically we are going to discuss all the theoretical aspect that we have discussed earlier in more practical fashion this time. But as that said, I'm going to quickly jump into my Windows 10 operating system and I will quickly show you what we are going to achieve this time. All right. So now I'm in my Windows 10 operating system in here and I'm going to make use of what is called as the Windows Terminal. So this is the Windows Terminal that I'm going to be using because it has some of the coolest options, something like tabbings and stuff, which you can actually use to navigate into multiple tab. And once again, Windows Terminal is in preview stage right now. You can see this, you can install it in an operating system and then you can start using it. It's very, very handy and it's very worth trying it. So please make sure that you have it. If not, you can still use PowerShell or Command Prompt to do the exact same operation that I'm doing in here. But that's going to be something on your part, like which is the tool of interest that you have. I have already installed the Docker and I have also enabled the Kubernetes within my Windows 10 operating system this time instead of Mac OS that I was showing all these days in my earlier sections. Starting this section, we are going to discuss everything in Windows operating system anyways. So I'm just going to create a directory this time and I'm going to call this as EA Kubernetes and then I'm just going to go to the EA Kubernetes over here and then I'm going to open the Visual Studio code. So with Visual Studio Code, as I told you before, we are going to make use of some of the extensions and I will show you why the extension is actually being required. So for that demonstration, I'm going to create a first par.yaml file, like how we created in our earlier videos. And within this par.yaml file, I'm going to create a simple pod file. Again, for the simple pod file, for this demonstration, I'm going to quickly show you how we can actually create and selenium hub setup so if you go to the google and if you just search for selenium hub and then you can just search for the docker hub over here and you can see there are many different images available so the one that you should be looking for is going to be the selenium slash hub so this is the image for running the grid hub of the selenium so i'm going to be basically using this particular hub for the part this time and I will show you how we can actually work with it. So in order for that, the first thing we need to do is the API version, which is going to be V1. And then I'm going to specify the kind as part, pretty much like how we discussed in our earlier videos. And then I'm going to specify the metadata this time with an intendation of Selenium hub. And then I'm going to give a label if I want so I'm just gonna give a labels here as name and then I'm gonna specify the spec here so the spec is gonna be uh, one more uh, tag that I need to specify and then I should give what is called as in containers and then I should give the name image and stuff so which is gonna be looking something like this so you can see that these are the details that we need to be specifying for and pods to be created, which is going to be an API version, a kind, metadata, name, uh, within metadata you need to specify the name, labels, and then we need to have a spec, which is going to hold my container and the image that I'm going to be looking for. So I can specify Selenium slash hub directly, or I can specify the version of the Selenium hub that I should be looking for. So I have just given the tag of the uh, image version and then the resource i can specify the limits for the resources to be used uh, like the memory should be uh, just 128 uh, megabytes and then the cpu should not exceed 500. similarly the port which i'm going to be specifying this time is 4444 and the liveliness probe using this http get so you can also perform an http get to get the uh, liveliness probe 
of an Selenium hub. So you can see that this is how you can create a par.yaml file in a very, very super simple fashion. And again, you need to remember some of these syntax over here, which is kind of pain. We already discussed about that in our earlier video while discussing in the section one. So in order to eradicate this problem, basically the creation of the par by the hand coded way, I'm gonna show you and most easiest option is by going to what is called as an extensions. So here you can just search for what is called as the Kubernetes, this one. Again, this is the plugin which is created by Microsoft. So you can install this particular uh, plugin. It's very, very interesting because it has so many different options in there. So you can see that it is uh, the Kubernetes tool by Visual Studio created by Microsoft. It helps you to create some of the options, something like kubectl, work directly with Kubernetes. Uh, there will be an option in here, as you can see, you can directly, it will, doc, it will directly talks to all the clusters which is available within my Kubernetes. It will probe that and it also shows you the parts which are running within them. You can see that it shows me the mini cube. It also shows me the system nodes of the mini cube, something like core DNS, etcd, and the cube. API servers, queue proxy, scheduler, uh, provisioner, uh, metrics, and the dashboard. If you remember, these are the same stuff that we discussed while, while discussing the architecture of Kubernetes. This is exactly the same thing, guys. Whatever we discussed in a diagrammatic fashion in our earlier videos, this is exactly we can see over here in a more practical manner, something like this. You can see the etcd is running, which is responsible to store our key value pair, to store each and every parts. That's exactly what it is. And similarly, the API server, which is the one place which kubectl uses to communicate with the Kubernetes. So it also shows in here, and then there is a controller manager, and there is a proxy, schedulers and stuff. So all these things are right now displayed once I install this particular plugin. And another extension is gonna be the YAML extension. Again, once you install the Kubernetes, this particular extension is gonna be installed for you automatically. So you don't really have to do anything over there. So it's already installed. So it's all good for now. Now I have to reload the uh, Visual Studio Core so that it becomes more robust. So I'm just gonna close this guy. I'm gonna open the Visual Studio Code once again. And I guess it's loaded, all good. So I'm just going to create one more part this time. So part with extension dot YAML over here. And you can see the magics are going to happen. I'm just going to type what is called as PO and this intelligence right now knows that, okay, you're going to do something like a part creation with Kubernetes, don't you? So I'm just going to hit enter. Boom. You can see it's going to create a structure for me without even me remembering all those structures. Pretty interesting, right? So this is the power of this particular tool, which is available within Visual Studio Code for us. This is something very, very interesting because it reduces so much of pain point for us because we are not gonna be really doing the Kubernetes work every day in and day out like the actual DevOps guys because we are test engineers and in order to really work with Kubernetes for a long time, you probably won't do this every day often something like this, like how the developers, our DevOps guys are gonna be doing. So these tools are something which makes us remember that these are the syntax that we should be using. All right, so now you can see that the syntax are gonna be pretty straightforward like how we wrote earlier. Pretty cool, right? So this is something which are very interesting. It also shows you some of the errors that you actually have within your uh, code, you can see uh, last time when I typed the value, I have never given a space for it. And it says that the label and this value is not matching exactly like how the syntax should be. So if I give a space here, the error is gone. So this is another great thing. So basically it will also shows you some of the syntactic options for you. So for instance, if I want to use something like a target port or something like that, I can still use it over here and the syntax is gonna be displayed for me. We are gonna be using this particular tool starting from this video. So just a heads up, like how we can use this. By this way, we can see that how things are gonna be working. Well, as that said, I'm gonna quickly show you how we can actually spin up a part that we have created because we have already created in here. We can quickly see how it actually works. So I'm just gonna do an LS so we can see that our part.yaml file is sitting in here. We can probably remove this guy because we don't really require him anymore. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna go over here 
and then I'm just going to run cube ctl create hyphen f and par dot yaml file so once I do that it is gonna run or create a part for me so before that I can quickly show you what are the parts which are really sitting within my kubernetes so I can just do something like kubectl get of parts you can see there is no namespace found so basically there is nothing in my kubectl right now so well as that said I'm just gonna do a create hyphen f of parts.yaml file you can see that it has been created and now if I just do a parts uh, get parts you can see that it is currently in running state which means the hub is right now running well again you can't really directly access this particular parts straight away because you somehow need to expose the port so if you remember in our earlier videos we discussed something called as kubectl of describe parts which is going to describe you what this particular part is basically in so you can see it has it shows you that what container it is running it is basically running a selenium hub container and this is the hub that you are using the image that you are using and this is the image id which is being pulled and it is uh, using the port as 4444 it's in running state right now and it also shows you the ip address which is currently being used by the mini cube to talk with it uh, so I can just use this particular IP address to communicate, but I can't really communicate because it is not being exposed So even if I go to the browser if I go in here and if I hit enter uh, you can see that Boom can't reach this page. So we'll be discussing about how we can actually Communicate with a part in our next video and we'll see how Services comes into picture for making these things to happen and again just recollect what services is quickly in our earlier videos so that you can really correlate with how things are actually working once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day